In this video, I'm going to talk about various tables, Dataverse tables, which uh, are used when a bot gets created within the Copilot Studio. So whenever you provision a Copilot or a bot using Copilot Studio, then there are some set of tables which gets populated with some values. So these are basically the nuts and bolts of the entire Copilot architecture. So to start with, if you see in the screen over there that uh, we have this couple of table, which is very much important, like the chatbots and the chatbot subcomponent. Now the chatbots table basically contains list of all the chatbots which you have created. Now that includes the older bot using Power Virtual Agent and also the new Copilot. So chatbots basically contains list of all the chatbots along with that metadata. Now chatbot subcomponent. Now chatbot subcomponent contains all the component which is required to build your chatbot or copilot. Now chatbot subcomponent basically consists of topics. It consists of uh, uh, the chatbot backend entities. It contains various other components, which I'm going to explain in the future slides. Now, there are other tables as well, like chatbot component collection, chatbot content pack, and bot content. Now, I didn't find any specific content within it, so I'm not sure the functioning of this particular table. However, the two primary tables which are very much important from an architecture perspective is chatbots and chatbot subcomponent. Then there are couple of other tables like copilot synonyms copilot glossary term copilot example question which are available uh, in the back end so if you are making use of synonyms or glossary terms or example questions then this particular table will come in picture now there is an another table called as ai copilot now these are the list of copilot which are available for you to extend so i'm going to cover that particular table as well now, if you go into the make.powerapps interface, then in the back end, you will see this table called as chatbot. Now, chatbot table will contain all the copilot or the bot which you have created using the copilot studio. Now, it contains various information like name, language, uh, status, application manifest, authentication configuration, authentication information. So, all these columns, uh, there are some there are some items which you can directly view in the interface like say the name of the bot which is readily available in the interface but there are some component which there are basically some parameters or like some uh, schema values which are not available in the user interface so if you want to view that then this is the table which you need to navigate to now this table uh, basically it represents a power virtual agent chatbot so that's what the description says it's a quite an old description because this table was used by power virtual agent but now copilot also uses the same table to store the copilot related information now some of the important information that can be viewed in the bot table are bot name bot language whether it's a managed bot or not application manifest and flow, authentication configuration, authentication mode, configuration in the form of JSON, icon of the bot in the form of base64, schema name, solution ID, access control policy, supported languages and templates. Now, some of the items I have highlighted over here, like say, if you want to know about the application manifest now in this particular bot what i've done is like i connected this bot to uh, and published this bot to a team's channel now if you see the application manifest information column for that specific bot you will see this information now what this uh, information contains it basically contains a json which uh, specifies what is the version number what is the app registration or channel registration app id uh, and the color icon information similarly uh, for one of the bot i have established a connection connection information so if you want to view that connection information then you can view the authentication configuration information which is again a json based format which will give you the connection name of the connection which you have established while utilizing the bot
then there is bot configuration like a configuration column which you see over here now it has uh, a, it's an again in a json format but if you see closely over here it gives you information about what kind of bot it is uh, what are the configuration uh, whether the generative actions are enabled or not and how are you utilizing the gpd settings and ai settings so these all information are readily available in the backend now these information you may not find easily in the user interface then one of the column uh, is about template so whenever you provision a bot there are multiple ways to provision a bot now one is you create a bot from scratch second you create a bot from some template which are readily available out of the box you create a bot uh, using say power pages interface okay uh, or you publish that bot to a power pages interface then you uh, you get uh, publish your bot uh, using a like say a default template okay so all the default template version number all these things are captured in this particular column so if at any point of time if you want to know uh, what template does this bot inherits from then this is the place to navigate and check now as you saw there's a table called as chatbot uh, then there is an another table called as chatbot subcomponent now chatbot subcomponent table holds basic key authoring information of chatbot such as topic entities variables uh, and many other things okay so it all depends on what kind of component are you utilizing within a bot now if you see this table chatbot subcomponent now i have a lot of items over here it's more than 200 and say maybe 70 items okay now if you see the screen uh the first one will give you the name information now it depends on what kind of component you have now in one of the bot i have uploaded a couple of files as a knowledge source file attachment so that's why this stored as in the component type as bot file attachment now any item which is using topic v2 is like i built using the new interface and it is a copilot uh, uh, authoring interface uh, anything which related to a bot variable is classified as uh, of component type as bot variable now all this information are stored as per the data type now if you see for bot variable you will see some more information like in terms of content so it will give you the context variables and the value of that variable however for uh, the file attachment the data type uh, the column uh, data uh, will be different compared to the other particular uh, items belonging to different content type now what are the different component type uh, in a bot now one is skill skill v2 topic topic v2 bot variable bot variable v2 bot entity bot entity v2 and bot translation v2 now anything which is v2 is the new copilot uh, based model anything which does not have v2 in it like scale topic bot variable and bot entity belongs to the earlier uh, data type of power virtual agent now apart from that there are other component type like if you upload a file using knowledge uh, knowledge uh, article then uh, basically you get this bot file attachment as a component type then you have an another component type like custom gpt knowledge source like if you are adding a knowledge but then that knowledge is not a file but it is pointing to some website then it is knowledge source then there are other component type like dialogue language understanding language generation trigger dialogue schema so anything which you create within a bot gets added to this particular table like a component type and all this uh, various subcomponents uh, belongs to one or the other component type which is mentioned in this screen now chatbot subcomponent table now what is the purpose of using that table now from that table from uh, the chatbot subcomponent table you're you're going to get various information like one of the information you may get is the bot name of the subcomponent like if you want to know what was the bot name of the subcomponent you can easily extract it from this table then you can extract the subcomponent uh, subcomponent schema so if you want to see the schema name now i'm going to when i'm going to demonstrate i'm going to show you the big screenshot but this screenshot is not 
like it just has three or four columns in it uh, but uh, from this table you will be able to get the schema name get the parent chatbot subcomponent details get the yaml code for chatbot subcomponent and get the json code for the bot variable as well so that's it from a theoretical perspective let's jump into the demo so i'm in uh, the copilot studio interface now i have a lot of copilot created in this interface as you see over here there are like more than 10 copilot which i have already created now if i navigate to the back end and if i move into the correct environment if i go into the table what i need to do is like first i need to just search for bot bot now the moment you search for bot and you select all then you here you will see five different tables now there are other tables apart from that so if i just type copilot then here you will see other four table as well now if you see this first table ai copilot now ai copilot is basically uh, the copilot which are available within the system which you can extend so uh, if you see the item over here it says microsoft 365 copilot and microsoft sales copilot and there are other column which you can enable as well over here so if you want to see some more information you can uh, select the other columns as well so if you see this two copilot microsoft 365 microsoft 365 copilot what it is it is basically uh, the copilot which are available for you for to extend okay so now when i click on create new copilot i can create new copilot and i can create new copilot action now from a library perspective i can uh, see the various uh, library components which are available in copilot studio or like if i click on add an item over here then i can create a connector i can create a conversational action i can create a prompt i can create a flow now if i click on connector then i'll get further uh, screens over here okay now why i showed you all this thing is because like on the first tab here you'll see custom copilot which you have already built but in microsoft tab here you will see copilot for microsoft 365 and there are coming soon uh, copilot like copilot for finance and copilot in uh, sharepoint now copilot for microsoft 365 if you want to extend you can extend it further now these are the items like say if you see here add action okay so if i click on add action then i'm in the context of this copilot for microsoft 365 now these are the table which stores all this configuration information over here so that's a uh, ai copilot table now if i search for copilot again then there are other tables which are available like copilot example question glossary terms and synonyms now as i'm not using this so i'm not able to demonstrate this but again this is also like a copilot related table which gets utilized when you're building or authoring or extending a copilot now the two table which are very much important which every developer should know is about chatbot and chatbot subcomponent however there are other tables like bot content chatbot component collection chatbot content pack now if i go to chatbot now this is uh, this represents a power virtual agent chatbot but this also stores copilot uh, related information as well so if you see the copilots over here which i have already created like there's a girish cleaner service girish it services girish modern bot giri classic bot all this information will be stored in this column so if you see over here in the name column here you will see this information like conversational action girish giri modern bot classic bot girish cleaner services so all these things all the bots which are available whether it's a copilot or it's a chatbot classic all this information will be displayed over here now what are the other things which you get from this table is you will come to know what language does this copilot is authored in so it's in english or any other language so here you can see that whether it is a managed or an unmanaged copilot or bot then who is the owner of it what is the status then there are other information like when it was created when it was modified however there are other rich set of information which you can view from here so if i select various other columns over here so i'm just going to randomly uh, pick up most of the columns over here let me select all these things 
just to show you what all rich information you can extract from the table okay now i'm not going to cover everything but i'll try to uh, show you some basic information okay so if you see this table and let me expand this table i think i lost the selection okay okay so if you see this table over here and if i scroll on the right hand side here you will see an application manifest information now this is the uh, bot which i have connected or published into teams so here i can see manifest information now this contains basically uh, teams detail uh, the version details the app registration id and the color icon in a page 64 format similarly for authentication configuration i will be able to see the connection uh, information uh, in a json format so if you want to view that you can go into the application config information and go to the corresponding bot now from an authentication perspective now you might have used uh, either none or no authentication or uh, azure ad authentication or custom azure active directory or generic oauth authentication so all this information against a bot will be displayed over here and uh, in this this column authentication trigger now if you see this it says always and as needed so for integrated it is always for none it is as needed uh, however if you see for custom azure active directories as needed and generic oauth as always so it, it it works in pair and then depending on your scenario what you have used how that authentication should work uh, whenever a bot is triggered so those all informations are stored in this column now here you will get the bot id as well so if you want to find out the bot id here you can find it very easily uh, then uh, how is what is the component sheet whether it is published or whether it is in draft so those information and a nice configuration information in terms of uh, the bot configuration like if you see the first uh, item over here for one of the bot and if you see this item for an, another bot okay so it's all different because i have made different different kind of bots and then which, which will have different kind of bot configuration settings now the icon is stored in the form of base 64 for any of the bot for which you do not have an icon it will show as blank however for other it will show the information in a base 64 format so you can copy this format and you can extract an icon out of it if you have a base 64 decoder now the supported language now the supported language is also uh, shown over here now for a couple of bots i have used different language like danish spanish dutch chinese simplified and for this bot i have used this language so you can see uh, just from this table how the bot is technically configured now remember this is uh, like if you have configured multiple languages then that means that bot will not have a generative ai capability because currently generative ai capability is mostly available in english language hence if you select generative ai capability for your copilot or a bot then you will not be able to select multiple language as of now then there is a template now if you want to know how your bot is provisioned whether it was just provisioned by just clicking on new copilot or new bot or you have used some sort of a template now i've used safe travels template for one of the bots so if you see this last row this was safe australia flight copilot this is a bot which i have created however i haven't gone and created it by just by creating new copilot but then i went into the template and then provisioned this so at any point of time if you want to know what template does this belong to uh, then this is the place you can go and check so this is all about our uh, chatbots table now every chatbot like if you go inside a chatbot you will find a lot of components in it right so if you just type bot over here then and if you navigate to all filter then you will see chatbot sub component so if you navigate to chatbot sub component then it is kind of like a primary key foreign key relationship with the chatbot table now for every item in the chatbot here you will find one reference now if you see for this particular bot the first item which i have uploaded is bot file attachment okay so i've added a knowledge against a specific bot okay so now this particular bot the first one which has a bot file attachment i've added a couple of attachment and that's why it is shown uh, in the component type as bot file attachment now if you want to view the actual file then you can uh, what you can do is like you can select 
uh, various items like accent color, bot component, component state. Then there is a file data column, icon URL. So I'm going to select uh, various uh, columns just to show you how it stores this information. Now, remember, every component has its own schema name as well. So if you want to identify the schema name of the component, which is part of your copilot or bot, then here you can see the schema name. So if you see the schema name, this is the schema name of the file, which I've uploaded as a knowledge source for one of the bot. Okay, so I've uploaded a couple of PDF and that's why it is showing us schema name something dot PDF. Now, similarly, the component type can be a topic V2. So just by looking into this table, you will come to know that this particular subcomponent is a uh, is used utilizing a modern topic like topic V2. But there are other uh, bots which are utilizing topic. So topic is again a component type which was used by power virtual agents. So if you see over here, this escalate topic. OK, so this is like uh, utilizing uh, the older uh, it was built using the older interface okay so it is used utilizing the old topic interface now topic topic v2 then there is bot file attachment which you have already covered and then any other subcomponent which you used uh, will be shown over here like say if you see this bot variable now article count is a bot variable now if you want to see the content information of that variable it will show you in a nice JSON format, right? So if you want to just check just by looking into the table, how the variables are configured, this is the place you need to go and check out those information. Now, then there is a knowledge source. Now, knowledge source means for one of the bot, I have utilized a hyperlink to a point to uh, a website just to provide those information. Now, if I just scroll on to the right here, I should be able to see various information okay now component type is knowledge source let me add uh, various other columns as well just to show you like say there is a category there is a component state there is a help link then there is a language as well uh, obi data uh, solution row id unique uh, status status reason so if i click on save over here then I should be able to see all this information. Now, if I just scroll uh, and then show you this knowledge source. Now, if, if you see this knowledge source on the top row, here you will see uh, which bot, what is the bot component ID for that knowledge source and it will generate its own schema and you can get various other information as you see over here, like say in the OBI data, here you will see the knowledge source configuration information and then uh, what it is actually searching for. So if you see this particular OBI data, it will point to the kind, it will point to the source, and then it, it says it is coming from data was structured search source, okay? And similarly, like this, you can explore various other components. Now, there is an, another knowledge source over here, Dev SharePoint site, this one. So if you just scroll to the right, then here you will see that this data type is pointing to a SharePoint search search uh, source. So that means I'm using a knowledge source, but then it is pointing to a SharePoint site. Earlier, it was pointing to a Dataverse site. So similarly, you can have various knowledge source pointers. And then if you want to see various information, you can search that, okay? So this is all about uh, basically chatbot subcomponent. Uh, so as in when you create various items, uh, this uh, for a particular co-pilot or a chatbot, then all this information will get stored in this chatbot subcomponent table. So this table is very much important for a developer to understand because if you want to extract some information and the information is not readily available in the bot, or uh, authoring interface or the co-pilot authoring interface then this is the place you need to go and try to get those information so this information will help you in troubleshooting your uh, bot application as well so that's it folks thanks for watching